What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, today we are going to be checking out this cool uh, new program that I found for visually being able to build programs using the Internet of Things. It is called Node Red. In this video, we'll be installing it and getting it set up and doing one quick small program to let you guys see how it works and how things go. It will probably continue with other videos, but if that is something that you would like to see, then stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay, guys, well, like I said, like the intro said, we're going to be installing Node Red, which is a flow based programming for the Internet of Things. Those of you who don't know what it is, basically, um, it's web based programming language. It's kind of neat. Um, and it uses object programming. So, you know, it reminds me um, of LabVIEW. If anybody has programmed in LabVIEW, it's kind of an object oriented programming language, but not in the sense that it uses like, it doesn't use text technically. It's just you drag and drop little modules and then you connect them up and then you code each module with either settings or actual uh, node.js code because that's what it's based on is the node.js uh, platform. And so you basically link things together and it has all kinds of pre-built controls and all kinds of things for the Internet of Things devices. So you can connect to social media, you can connect to emails, you can connect to sensors. Um, and even with this, we'll take it. This is the initial setup video, but we'll even take it as far as we'll be able to pull in GPIO uh, information off of the Raspberry Pi and do things with it in this style of programming language. It's very interesting. It was actually recommended to me by you guys. There's a few of you guys that recommended this. So we're going to be starting down the rabbit hole. So to end up getting started with this, what we're going to do is I will basically show you how to install. And then we will look and see how to create a very simple uh, like Twitter feed catching thing where it'll basically catch any messages that we want to uh, preserve and it'll throw it out to the screen and show us. Uh, you'll, you'll get the gist of it once we get started. So I've got a brand new Raspberry Pi loaded up with the uh, latest version of uh, Raspbian, which I believe is the stretch since they had security vulnerabilities in the Jesse platform. So they, uh, they released a uh, version called stretch and it's the latest one um, in fact I'll just show it to you so I'm 4941 that's what I'm running today so in any case let's go ahead and I'm gonna get some notes going here uh, so that we can do it this is going to be using the manual installation uh, just because you can download Raspbian images that do have uh, this already loaded up on it, except I think the latest version is only the Jesse version, which still has that security vulnerability in it. I don't know, as of this video right now, I don't know if they have updated uh, to stretch, but uh, right now if you download the image file and just image the USB card that has Node Red on it, it's only the Jesse image. So um, I'm going to do this on the stretch image and we're going to do it manual. So that way, no matter what version of Raspbian you have, this should work. All right. So first thing we need to do is we need to install some stuff. So we're going to sudo apt get install build essential python RPI dot GPIO. So we should be able to install all of this. Uh, oh, I need to do, we need to get our updates because I literally just flashed this card. So we're going to do a sudo apt get update and that's going to give us our updates um, and update all of our packages and everything as usual. Standard stuff. Okay, now that that has completed, uh, we'll go ahead and do the other, which is the sudo apt get install build essential python pi gpio. Now, the, may, the stretch may already have it, and it looks like it does. So stretch uh, already has this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the big command, which I'm going to cut and paste. I will put a link down in the description, as always, to the instructions uh, that are from nodered.org. Uh, but basically, you have this bash command, and we're going to run this right now. So let's let that roll. And then this script will remove any pre-installed versions of Node.js and basically install the new one, yada, yada, yada. Do you want to, do you want to continue? Yes, we do. 
So now we're going to go through the install. This can take up to, yeah, 20 to 30 minutes. So it will go down through these different things. It's going to remove old versions, remove old versions of Node.js, Node.red. That's going to install it and yada, yada, yada. And it gives you little check marks as it goes down the goes down the list and once this reaches the bottom it will be fully installed and then I will uh, show you some other things uh, to make sure that the GPIO setups and things like that have been installed properly that python rpi.gpio that is the uh, build library or or I guess you'd say installation package that you need to be able to access the GPIO because it does it through Python scripting so um, like I said if you downloaded stretch as we saw here uh, stretch already uh, has that uh, as a base of the base image so should be good all right I'm going to stop talking and I am going to pause and we shall return when this has uh, completed installation and I'll show you how to set it up and get it running okay so this has now finished installing so now what we will do is we will go ahead and start up our node red. Um, if you want to check to make sure that the GPIO stuff is correct, there is a command to write. Let's see. It's going to be stored in USR lib node modules node red slash nodes. It's in a deep place core hardware. Uh, yeah, hardware. Eh. Okay, so now inside here, there is the NRGI or GPIO. Did I spell that right? NR. Ah! NRG. No. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I have to do the dot slash. Yes. And then you can type ver, and it should give you the version. There you go. And that's how you know that it's running. So or that it's that it can be called or whatever for the GPIO. But that'll be a later video. Currently, we're just going to work on getting it started and getting it working. So it's basically all web based. All right. So to start this puppy up, it's actually very simple. You, know, you just have to type in node red pi and then dash dash max old space size equal ah, equal to 256. OK, you have to add that command. And that's pretty much it. We're going to hit go. And then this should fire up the server. And it will be at basically the IP address of your Pi. So you need to, to have the IP address of your Pi. And then um, see, that's what's showing here. It's showing the loop back port. So it's a, basically the local host, but the, the port is 1880. So what you need to do is come over here. And we need to do, I know my IP address. 1.48 and then 1880 I've gone to this before and hit enter and you will get the node red voila there it is so this is basically your your basic uh, place I'm gonna put this down here a little bit um, I'm gonna put me I'm gonna put me right here yay I'm at the bottom okay so basically this is kind of like your little workspace here's all the different uh, yeah, inputs and functions, uh, outputs, um, it even has social media like stuff like you have Twitter or email, however you want to do it. And, and based on where these little dots are, they're either inputs or outputs. So you could have an input uh, of Twitter, something coming from Twitter, and then you could, let's say, bring that in or let's sorry, output an output from Twitter and bring that to an input for an email and email that off to somewhere to yourself somebody something i don't know whatever but what we're going to do is we're going to basically capture uh some twitter stuff is what we're going to do so it's very easy you just pull one of these blocks and dump it dump it into this workspace called a flow it even gives you some information some instructions off to the side all right and then we're going to send that to the debug output is what we're going to do all right so now i'm going to double click on this and then it needs credentials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new credentials. What this is going to do is I'm going to basically um, authenticate with Twitter, my Twitter account. So I'm going to click go. I'm going to click authorize app. It's going to redirect and say, yep, you're good. So now it's got my at M-I-S-P-E-R-E-E. By the way, if you haven't followed me, go follow me. And we're going to click add. 
And so that basically attaches this little button to my Twitter account, okay? So now what you can do is you can do many different things. You can search public tweets, tweets from people you follow, certain tweets you use, whatever you want to do. But you can basically search for information. I'm going to say all public tweets. And let's look for, since this channel is all about electronics, electronics. All right? And we'll call this elect search. You can name all your different nodes. All right, and then I'm going to say done. All right, so there's my elect search. Now, I want to take this and connect it to my debug, okay? And over here, there's a tab. It's your debug tab, all right? So now, once I put the solution into place and let it run, you should start seeing any tweet that comes in to Twitter that's a public tweet anywhere that has anything to do with electronics, it should show up in this debug. And that's showing you how you can connect this to your Twitter and then send that to some. You could send it somewhere else. You could even have it where uh, maybe it would fire off an email to somebody or it would fire off, you know, whatever. I even saw someone use a deal where you could like use a database. If you have a database like a MySQL or something like that running somewhere, you can uh, dump it to that. You could do, um, so they have Watson IoT, they have Play Audio. So maybe once it finds a search, it'll, it'll ding or something. Anyway. All we got to do to get this active is we come up here to this that says deploy. You hit deploy, successfully deployed. So now if we wait a few minutes, we should see it. Anything about electronics pop up here and there we go. There's a couple of searches. I don't know if that's big enough where you guys can see it. First electronics project, Viking electronics, anything with electronics in it, it's going to show up here. And that's showing the output of this little guy in this debug menu. All right. So that is a very quick and uh, dirty way of hooking up things to the node red, or at least installing node red and getting it going. Um, I will come up with more videos for this. We will be uh, using the GPIO that is on board the uh, Raspberry Pi. And we'll be connecting it to maybe some sensors and stuff. I got a lot of those Seed Studio uh, sensors and whatnot. We may connect up some sensors and have it maybe firing off emails and stuff based on what's going on, or firing off tweets, or or you know who knows what. But I'll come up with something and tell you what to help me figure that out. <laughs> Hi, honey. To help you fi to figure that out, um, or to help me figure it out, throw that into the comments down below, please. Uh, let me know what you would like to see maybe with this thing, uh, what kind of different cool projects, or if you've seen cool projects with Note Red before. Um, it's fairly new to me. Uh, it's the first time I've installed it. Seems pretty cool and pretty pretty intuitive to, to use. So in any case, all right, guys, um, that'll be it for this video of configuring Node Red and getting it installed and running. I'll probably do some subsequent videos on how to get it to auto start and things like that because you can get this to start up every time uh, you reboot the Pi. So guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, and share because that really helps out the videos, helps me keep bringing the information and cool things to you, as well as check me out on all the different socials. Obviously, you can see that I am on Twitter and definitely check out the uh, forum link. I'm putting uh, forum links at the bottom now. I created a Google forum so that we can kind of talk to each other and kind of have a community instead of the answers to certain problems being spread out on videos. So check out that uh, community link uh, for the forum. And guys, I will see you next time.